You may be wondering why me, a fully grown man, is lying on the floor of his apartment, huddled over a light box with a Mexican banknote on the floor. The answer? Methamphetamine. YouTube comments. The answer is YouTube comments. And this is the GFX 100S, which has one specific feature that we'll be talking about today. Pixel Shift Capture. The keen-eyed amongst you will have noticed that that wasn't me, but Michael Bobenko, who works for Fuji GFX as an ambassador or something, a technician. Now, Michael is a genius and understands the system deeply, so we're going to be borrowing a lot of his words today. However, you can't trust him, because listen to how he describes the genius. <laughs> That's so harsh. <laughs> but seriously, listen to how he describes the GFX 100, which costs us well over $10,000 and takes one photo every leap year. The Fujifilm GFX 100 large format digital camera has proven itself to be a fast, accurate, affordable imaging machine. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. <laughs> I, I, I first want to start this video formally by apologising to Michael Babenka, who's done absolutely nothing wrong and doesn't warrant any of that. I just thought it was funny because there's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you, Michael. If you see this, and I really hope you don't, you're a lovely man who knows so much more about photography than I do. If you had a channel where I'd plug the hell out of it to my 17 subscribers that actually comment and like this thing. But anyway, today we're talking about Pixel Shift, my former nemesis. And, and really, this is a chance for me to articulate just how much I've grown over the last year as a photographer and how much your comments have helped me. Mommy, wow. I'm a big kid now. For that, we're going to break it up three parts, right? Setup, how do you set this up? What are the settings? How should you do it? Secondly, the shoot. How do you actually deal with uh, erasing the, vi the vibrations, as the uh, no one calls it? Um, because it's 1.67 or 1.87 microns. This pixel is moving 16 times. And then in post, we're going to find out how only if you work for NASA and have access to a supercomputer is this simple, because the files you produce are one and a half gigabytes. So with that, we'll crack in to the setup guide, niftily filmed by me much earlier before I got distracted, which is why I'm now cold on the roof. Okay, here's some setup tips. First things first, nothing happens without a tripod. You're gonna to have to keep that camera rock steady and you do not wanna be shooting any moving subjects. This is a banknote, it's not going anywhere. If you have optical image stabilization in your lens, switch that off and make sure your focus of your camera is in manual. Finally, your drive mode. Here's where you'll find pixel shift. It's at the bottom of the menu. I selected short, but if you have a flash, make sure you have enough time for the interval charge to reload. And then I'm going to look at my aperture. Mine's at f11, which is going to give me plenty of sharpness, and my shutter speed at 250 of a second and 100 ISO. And most importantly, you're going to want to set a 10 second timer. And then when you hit the trigger, take a long, deep breath. And then. Okay, so the reason that fleeing is effective, and basically why I want you to do it, is because you can minimize vibrations. Obviously, running away is not great for vibrations, but when you get far away, stand perfectly still or use a trigger. Anything you can do, don't use that cursed app. Anything you can do to minimize vibrations is really going to change your outcomes here. This is moving at such a small fraction that these little warbles really, really bother the sensor. Just trust me on that and get everything locked down, locked in, and super secure. Stop walking. Now. No walking. Now. Once you've had about 14 hours to put this into your actual computer, what you're going to find out is I've done three things. One, I took an image with OIS in the lens on and one with it off to check which was better. If you turn OIS off, it is slightly better. That's why the tip made it in there. It's imperceptible to the human eye, but it is better once you go zoomy in. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a standard image of a banknote uh, taken on the Fuji GFX versus a pixel shift image, exactly the same image one with pixel shift on, one with it off. So you can compare and contrast and understand if this is the right solution for you. Because it's you that I care about and it's your digital love that I crave. Let me be your hero. Okay, trigger warning. You're going to have to use some technology that Fuji designed. This is a thousand monkeys working at a thousand typewriters. But fear not, 
The chimpanzee that made the app was obviously off sick this day, so you can just go straight ahead and install the Pixel Shift combiner. As you can see with Fuji software, it's always 1998, but this is quite easy to use. Simply hit register, hit the first image in the series that you took, and that's all you need to do. The app will work out the rest. Just hit run, it'll combine them automatically, and voila. Okay, so I've captured the normal in Photoshop, and I've captured the pixel shift in Photoshop. No edits beyond adding this layer of text for clarity. But so what we're going to do is we're going to drill in on this Mexican Bible thing. All right. So this was taken with absolutely no adjustments, no pixel shift, just the ordinary thing. And we're just going to keep zooming because what this does is it defines clarity and depth of the image and bang at that length. See how it's got all gritty and pixely, right? That's about as far as you can go in without the individual pixels being on display. So hopefully, hopefully and definitely because I did test this with the pixel shift image, which is now being a dick. Um, with the pixel shift image, you can go into this and look, come with me. We're going to focus on the P. Still going into that P. See, now again, sharpness wise, compare and contrast, slightly better. Yeah, but there's so much more information in this image that before you hit that individual pixel level, bang, there it is there. Now you compare that hitting the pixel level with there hitting the pixel level. Exactly the same image, same focal length, same lens, same camera. This is where you hit into pixel land about here. And over here you hit it really at, at the this level. It's a much larger file. Um, I can't be asked to compare edge softness and things. This is, Honestly, this thing is 10x the detail in it. Um, will you need it for any other purpose apart from showing off to your loser friends? Probably not. But if you work in an art gallery, which an unbelievable amount of people in my comment section claim to, you're going to have the best archival results with the pixel shift. Do the pixel shift. Shift to your heart's content. Anyway, I hope that was at least vaguely useful. Hope you enjoyed today's video, um, mainly because I haven't made it yet. Uh, I'm filming this in advance like a pro. So I hope you enjoyed it because fuck knows if it's any good. You'll let me know in the comments though, won't you? And I'll see you very soon. Mwah. That was a bit sensual. That was for you, Michael. I'm sorry. <laughs>